Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. Just got back from Las Vegas at CES 2020, which was a great time. Saw a lot of familiar faces, hung out with some friends, got to meet some new people as well. So I wanna go ahead and make a recap of all of the cool tech that I saw at CES this year. As usual, there was a wide variety of tech that was shown off at CES. It also seemed like there was more people than usual. It was packed at the convention centers. So let's go ahead and get into my full recap of CES 2020. The first product that was unveiled, I was a little surprised about. It is the Galaxy Chromebook from Samsung. And they say that this is the best Chromebook on the market right now. It actually reminded me of the Google Pixel book that they came out with a few years ago because that was the high end top tier Pixel book that I really love and I still love to this day. So it seems like this is the refresh with the higher updated specs, the high end display, high-end processor as well. The Galaxy Chromebook will be available Q1 2020 starting at $1,000. So yes, high-end Chromebook yet again. It does have a 13.3 inch 4K AMOLED display, which is a touchscreen and that display was gorgeous. Really liked looking at it. Kind of excited for this device based on that display alone. It has the 10th gen Intel processor. You can get up to 16 gigs of RAM and up to one terabyte of SSD storage. It also includes Wi-Fi 6. Some of our next really cool products we're gonna check out are from Amazon themselves. Got to really take a look at their booth that they had and also Amazon Alexa compatible products. Big shout out to Amazon, they are the sponsor of this video. So thank you very much for sponsoring me and my trip to CES. Believe it or not, there are over 100,000 compatible devices with Amazon's Alexa. And I even got to check out the Ride to Win with Alexa cab. Take a ride in it where they asked me a bunch of questions and I could win prizes using the Echo Auto that they had in the cab. Now, I actually won a few prizes, so you might wanna stay tuned to later on in the video. Lamborghini even announced a partnership with Alexa to integrate it in one of their cars so you can use it to control things about the car or maybe even make a call or text message. At Amazon's booth, they showed off an iRobot automatic lawnmower that you can activate with your voice using Alexa, which I thought was so cool having automatic lawnmower because Back in my day, I actually had to mow the lawn every week at my family's house, but it's just so cool that they're making these tasks automated and something you can just say, hey, go mow the lawn. Amazon also had a vending machine. Using Alexa, you can go ahead and ask for the new Coca-Cola energy drink. Here's the quick demo of that. Alexa, order Coca-Cola energy. This goes well after my favorite kind of sleep, a power nap. Ha, huh, see what I did there? And speaking of that Coca-Cola energy drink, I was really surprised. It tasted very similar to traditional Coca-Cola. There was also a Samsung smart fridge, which has a touch screen. However, it also has integration with the Amazon dash buttons, where if you needed to reorder something, just go ahead and press one of the buttons, it'll order it for you. I got up close with the Fire TV Cube and was really surprised to learn that Fire TV has more than 40 million monthly active users. Also got to check out Amazon's new wearables, their day one editions, the Echo Frames and Echo Loop. With the frames, trying them on, they were fairly comfortable. They weren't too heavy at all. You can go ahead and just activate Alexa on your head. And with the audio, it goes directly into your ear. It, I have a hard time hearing audio coming out of the frames when they're on someone else's head. Here's also just a close look at the Echo Loop. Essentially a ring that you have on your hand where you can activate Alexa with your hand. It has a microphone built in so you can ask it questions and listen with the speaker built in. On the mobile side of things, there were a couple concept phones that really caught my eye. First of all, of course, the OnePlus Concept One phone, which actually uses electrochromic glass on the back of it to hide the camera lenses to make it the invisible camera. They use this glass in trains, airplane windows, car roofs as well and it actually doubles as an ND filter. An ND filter is something you use in photography. It is a neutral density filter where it doesn't shift the color because it blocks wavelengths within a specific range. So what does that mean in simple terms? It's actually a filter to darken the lens when the shot is too bright. 
so it has less light reaching the camera and you don't have to change the aperture. This ND filter will be in pro mode, of course, if you wanna change some of those settings. So a cool concept to hide all the lenses, especially with more lenses being added, giving companies a little more wiggle room on where they can put those lenses on the back of the phone. TCL also showed off a concept foldable phone and I do love my foldable phones. And this one was interesting because I really liked the aspect ratio when you unfolded it. It really gave even more of a tablet feel. However, when you closed it, it was a little bit wide. So it is of course just a concept. I'm excited to see when TCL will actually push out a product from this concept. If you are unfamiliar with TCL, they're the company that does Alcatel phones, Blackberry, and even Palm. However, they actually teased some new TCL branded phones coming out. They have the TCL 10 Pro, the 10L, and the 10 5G. And what's exciting about these phones is that they said that they will all be start at under $500. This was more of a teaser, so we're limited with the information we were given, but it does seem like the 10 Pro is the highest end of the models, and the L version is the light the lower end, probably the less expensive model. And then of course, 5G being active on the new 5G networks that are coming out. So kind of excited to see what T-Scale is going to bring to market come Mobile World Congress when they officially announce them. They also said that they will be working with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 700 series processors. On the TV front, nothing crazy exciting. There were a lot of 8K TVs out there. Here's a look at some of LG's. And in my opinion, I'm not too excited about 8K just yet. Of course, because there's really no content content to consume in 8K. I think live TV needs to upgrade to 4K and then we can start focusing on pushing the boundaries of 8K. Samsung showed off a TV that will automatically switch from landscape to portrait mode called the Cero. And this is pretty cool as a concept. I don't know if I need it in my life, but it would be nice if maybe there's a vertical video being shown on the TV. It'll recognize it and say, hey, let's go ahead and flip to vertical. It was nice looking as well, so you can have it vertical showing off maybe pictures that you take in vertical mode, or of course it can flip to horizontal if there's pictures you wanna show off there. But I also noticed that of course it needs to be on that stand, so you're probably gonna have it on the floor potentially, so that might limit some users maybe that wanna wall hang a TV, etc. Samsung also showed off an Odyssey G9 gaming monitor, which was a crazy, ultra wide, it's a 49 inch 1440p display. It gets up to 240 Hertz, 1000 R curvature. So I'm really excited to really test this out, play some games on it, hopefully in the near future. On LG side, they also revealed an exciting gaming monitor. This is for 4K gaming. This is a nano IPS display, one millisecond response time, G-Sync compatible, 144 Hertz. However, you can overclock it to 160 Hertz. So a couple exciting gaming monitors. Also got a quick hands-on with LG's new Gram laptop. This is a 17 inch model and it's less than three pounds. It was crazy how light that laptop was. The final product I wanna talk about is kind of a concept. We'll see if it actually comes to market. It is the Samsung Bali, which is an AI robot that rolls around the house and responds to commands. It felt like they wanted to give a more pet vibe to a robot. So maybe it'll see a mess on the floor while it's rolling around and then go ahead and say, hey, Robotic vacuum, go ahead and clean that up. And it can do different things. Here's a quick demo of it just responding to the human and actually rolling up to it. So that is just my recap of CES 2020. It was a lot of fun. Oh, and of course, with my Alexa ride to win, here is how you can go ahead and win one of the prizes that I won. Just a quick giveaway for you guys. Thanks for watching the video, especially for those of you that watched all the way through, checked out the whole video. It does mean a lot. Thank you for the support. So first come, first served, whoever redeems this, you can choose the Ring Video Doorbell or the Philips Hue Starter Kit. Up to you. So that's it for now. A lot more content to come. So be sure you click that subscribe button. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching.